Hi friends, welcome to Learning Space. So today we are going to start with the module number 5 which is going to be the structure of atmosphere and in that we are going to see the first layer of the atmosphere which is going to be troposphere. So these are the different layers of atmosphere. The atmosphere is composed of the following layers. First and foremost we have the troposphere and then comes stratosphere and then it is mesosphere and then you have the fourth layer as thermosphere and the fifth is going to be exosphere. Now as you can see in the picture the troposphere is wherein you have all of the weather activity. Now we can see a quick summary so that you get to know what is what and then comes the stratosphere layer. In the stratosphere you have the ozonosphere which is very important for living organisms. Also the stratosphere is the layer where commercial aircrafts they fly because of the less turbulence in stratosphere. Then comes the layer of mesosphere. Here this is where meteoroids get burned upon entering the earth's atmosphere. Then there is thermosphere. Now in thermosphere that is where you have the international space shuttles orbiting around the earth. The fifth and the last layer is exosphere. Now this is where the earth's atmosphere merges into outer space. So first we are going to see the troposphere. So here this is the lowermost layer and this is the abode of all living organisms. Almost all weather phenomena occur in this layer. You have the entire weather phenomena that occurring in the earth occurs in this layer. Its average height is around 13 km. However, there are some latitudinal differences in the case of troposphere. That is, its height is roughly around 6 to 8 km above the poles and 16 to 18 km above the equator. Now, this is what I mean by the latitudinal differences of troposphere. Now, the upper limit of the troposphere, it is known as tropopause. It is known as tropopause because here there is a pause. This is a zone of pause where the mixing stops. That is why this is known as a tropopause because there is no further turbulence. We will be dealing with what is tropopause, what happens at the tropopause in detail. Before going any further, I need to clarify one point in this module. Now in this entire module, I have designed it in the format of a question and answer so that it will be beneficial for you in the case of mains as well as in the case of prelims. There can be numerous questions from this one module alone. So please pay attention to it as we go further. Now I have told you about tropopause and the troposphere. You may expect the troposphere to be in this format. That is the tropopause to be entirely parallel to the surface of the earth. But in reality, this is not so. The troposphere on the tropopause, the upper limit of the troposphere, they are not exactly parallel with the surface of the earth. On the other hand, you have this sort of differences. In reality, this is what you expect. That is, it is wider at the equator and it is narrow at the poles. That is what we have seen in this point itself. It is wider around the equator and it is narrow around the poles. Now, why does this difference in height of the troposphere happen? This we are going to see as a question and answer itself because I think it will help you in both prelims as well as in mains. So, in another format, this would be the height of tropopause. If this is considered to be the surface of the earth, then this would be your tropopause. There is a difference in height. This will be 16 km in the case of equator and 6 km in the case of poles. Why is it so? There are three reasons for the difference of the height of the tropopause or the troposphere. Now, we will analyze them reason by reason. The reason number one would be because of the heating differences at the equator and at the poles. Now, we very well know that at the equator, there is a maximum heat. There is a high heat in the equatorial region, 
विच विल हीट अप द एयर मास इन दोज एरिया नो वॉट विल हैपन इज दैट वेन देर इज सडन हीट इन द इक्विटोरियल रीजन द हीटेड एयर मास विल एक्सपैंड इन वॉल्यूम वॉट विल हैपन इज इट विल बिकम लेस डेंस एंड इवेंचुअली दे विल राइस अप बिकॉज वॉट एवर इज लेस इन वॉल्यूम एंड लेस डेंस दे विल इवेंचुअली राइस अप एंड दिस विल कॉज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग कन्वेक्शन करंट दैट इज द रीजन वाई वी हैव दीज थंडर स्टॉम्स हियर बिकॉज ऑफ दी स्ट्रॉन्ग कन्वेक्शन करंट एज सुन एज द एयर मास इज हीट अप दे राइज अब and because of the air parcel rising above you have the strong convection current now because of this excessive heating because of the strong convection current that will push the tropopause upward the expanding air masses the rising air masses will push the tropopause upward and that is why there is a huge height difference in the equatorial region because of the extreme convection current because of the excessive heating pushes the air masses above and you have this 16 km height difference in equator now coming to what happens at the poles now at the poles the reverse happens because it is extremely cold and what will happen if it is extremely cold if the air parcel becomes dense and it will start sinking now once it starts sinking high difference will obviously decrease because it is getting pushed inward and that is why the height will obviously decrease now this causes the tropopause to remain at a lower height let's go back to the picture now here you have a lot of iceberg it will be extremely cold at poles and that is why there will be low heat that is in fact it will be very cold and therefore you will have sinking air and therefore less tropopause whereas in the equator you have high heat rising air masses and therefore higher tropopause now this is another form of putting it in the pictorial representation that is in the case of equator you have the heated air parcel that is rising therefore here you have a lot of height difference it will be wider around the equator whereas in the case of poles there will be cold air and it will be descending and therefore the air the height difference will also be low also the, it will be very less wide at the poles whereas it will be very wide at the equator heated air in the equator is rising while the cold air is descending now this is another reason for the expansion of atmosphere or the expansion of the troposphere at the equator coming to the reason number 2 now this has to do with gravity of the earth now what is gravity got to do with the tropospheric level that is because the earth is actually not a perfect sphere it is an oblate spheroid now this term the oblate spheroid is given by none other than sir isaac newton newton himself found that the earth is not a perfect sphere but it is a spheroid that is it is almost a bit flat at the poles whereas it is bulging in the case of equator because of this structure of the earth the gravity increases or the gravity is maximum at the poles whereas it is minimum in the case of equator because as you can see this point is actually closer to the center of the earth than this point therefore at the equator you will have minimum gravity and at the poles you will have maximum gravity now because of this factor the atmosphere is pulled with more force near the poles than at the equator because obviously there is more gravitational force at the poles and therefore it will tend to pull the atmosphere within itself whereas in the case of equator it will just push them away because of minimum gravitational force this will lead to contraction of the atmosphere at the poles and expansion at the equator now this is one of the reason the third reason is very closely related with this point that is it is dealing with the centrifugal force of the earth now the centrifugal force is nothing but the force that is acting on a moving body which is directed 
away from itself. That is if a, a body is moving in a circular path, the centrifugal force is directed away from the moving body and therefore because of this centrifugal force which is maximum at the case of the equator. Now, why is it maximum at the case of equator? Now, that is because this itself can come as a question in case of prelims because the equator is the one with the largest diameter. Now, for the earth to rotate as one single body, the equator has to rotate at a much larger speed than the poles because uh, the pole has a smaller diameter than the equator and for the earth to rotate as one single body, the equator must have the highest speed. Therefore, the centrifugal force is maximum there. It is actually directly related with the speed of the rotation of the earth. Therefore, the centrifugal force is maximum at the equator. Because of this, the atmosphere is thrown away from the equator, whereas it is pulled inward towards the poles. That is why the atmosphere tends to bulge out at the equator because of the centrifugal force. So, we have answered this question in total. Why is the height of the tropopause? that is the troposphere because the tropopause is nothing but the upper limit of the troposphere maximum around the equator and minimum around the poles. We have just answered the question. I would like to sum it up for you three reasons. One would be the variation of heat in the equator and the cold air in the poles. The second would be the gravity that is maximum in the case of poles and minimum at the equator. And the third would be because of the centrifugal force which is maximum at the equator and minimum at the poles. Because of all these three reasons put together you have the answer for this question. Now we are going to deal with the fifth characteristic of troposphere. Now temperature in the troposphere it drops with the increasing altitude at the rate of 6.5 degrees Celsius per thousand meter. This rate is known as the normal lapse rate. I am bringing in a new term. This is going to come for your entire climatology module. Please pay attention to this. This is known as the normal lapse rate or NLR. That is at the rate of 6.5 degrees Celsius per thousand meter. Why does this temperature drop occur in the troposphere? Again another question, again a very important question. So, I am dealing this entire module with respect to question and answer format for your easy understanding. So, why does this temperature drop happen? That is because as we ascend higher in the atmosphere, the amount of heat gets lost to the subsecutive layer lying below. That is you ascend higher, the layer lying below will have much more heat than the layer lying above. So, this is like normal science, basic science, there is no high tech in it. Then comes the second point. Now, here the air pressure, it is higher in the lower atmosphere. Now, that is because of the density differences of the air as a whole. Now, the density of the air is maximum at the lower part of the atmosphere. The density is maximum here, whereas it is minimum at this point. Therefore, let us assume that a person is standing here. Now, he will have the weight of the entire air mass overlying him at this point. Therefore, the pressure is maximum at the ground surface at the sea level than the air mass is lying above. For coming to the second point back again, the air pressure is higher in the lower portion near the earth's surface because of the weight of all the overlying layers above. Thus, the density of air decreases as we move upwards. But what will happen when the density decreases? Now, when the density decreases, it means the number of air molecules present in the lower atmosphere is maximum, whereas the number of molecules present in the upper atmosphere is minimum. Only when you have a lot of air molecules, there will be good conduction of heat. There will be a good transfer of heat between the molecules. If there is less molecules, your heat transfer would be very less. 
that is why the lower layers experience a much more heat than the layers lying above. The third point is going to be that the lower layer of atmosphere contains more water vapor and dust particle. We have seen this already because in the water vapor session, we saw that 90% of the water vapor is present within a height of 5 km and that is the reason this is given. The lower layer of the air contains more water vapor and dust particles than the layers above and hence it absorbs large amounts of heat radiated from the earth's surface. Because of these three reasons, we have the temperature dropping as we move higher in the atmosphere, especially in the troposphere. We are talking this just with regard to troposphere. This NLR applies only to troposphere. So, this picture here, it shows the connection between altitude, temperature and air density. Now, as the altitude increases, the air temperature and the density decreases. We just now saw how the density decreases with increasing altitude and as the density decreases, your temperature also decreases in the tropospheric layer. Now, as usual, we will see one question that has come in the past UPSC prelims 2012. Now, this has to do with the tropospherical temperature difference. Let us see the question now. The question is, normally the temperature decreases with increase in height from the earth's surface. Yes. So, because, because has been asked. Now, that is why I am giving you everything in terms of question and answer. Because now then you will come to know the same thing for prelims and for mains. So, the options are the atmosphere can be heated upwards only from the earth's surface. Yes, it is a true statement. There is more moisture in the upper atmosphere. That is absolutely wrong. There is more moisture in the lower portion of the atmosphere. So, this statement is wrong. The air is less dense in the upper atmosphere. Yes, we just now saw in the previous diagram, the air is less dense in the upper atmosphere. So, the third statement is correct. The answer is 1 and 3 only. Now, we will analyze how we arrived at this answer so that you get a detailed picture of it. Now, statement 1 is correct. What was the statement 1? It was the atmosphere can be heated upwards from the earth's surface only because the earth's surface that will be heated by the incoming solar rays, which is short wave radiation. On the other hand, the earth after absorbing the heat, re-radiates it back and that is known as the long wave radiation. Now, we have already seen, you must remember this picture that we have already seen the long wave terrestrial radiation rises the temperature of the earth than the incoming short wave radiation. Now, this source of heat, it is known as the ground radiation or terrestrial radiation. In fact, we have already seen that more than the short wave radiation, it is the long wave radiation that the earth emits that heats the earth more than the short wave radiation. Now, coming to the second statement. Uh, this has got to do with the levels of water vapor in the atmosphere. That is not true. The upper levels of atmosphere does not contain much water vapor. More than 90% of the water vapor is present in the lower level or the 5 km from the earth's surface. That is where you have the maximum water vapor concentration. Now, coming to the third statement, it has got to do with the density of the air. We have seen now the air is less dense in the upper atmosphere whereas it is more dense in the lower atmosphere and thus temperature is low in the upper atmosphere. Now, we are coming to the sixth characteristic of troposphere. Now, this particular point, it deals with the seasonal difference of height of the troposphere. That is, it varies by season. It is lower in the winter season, whereas it is very higher in the summer season. What is the reason for this seasonal variation of height? That is what we are going to see now. Now, as you can see from the picture, this would be the polar tropopause. 
the black colored layer is the polar tropopause whereas this would be the tropical tropopause and obviously A is much greater than B because this is going to be almost 16 or 18 kilometers whereas this is going to be just 6 or 8 kilometers. Now when it comes to the winter or the summer season there is a difference that is what we are going to see right now. In the winters the air becomes very cold that is it becomes more dense colder air starts sinking we have seen it already and why does it start sinking that is because its density is actually increasing cold air becomes more dense therefore in general there is a drop in height look at the figure here in the case of winter tropopause there is a drop in height the height actually decreases and that is because of the increasing density during the winter temperatures. Over the equator, you do not see this phenomena because there is very less seasonal differences in the case of equator. They mostly have uh, throughout the year, they have the same temperature, almost the same temperature and therefore, you cannot expect a winter in the equator. Hence, this variation is not greatly observed over the equator. So, this has got to do more with the poles alone. This seasonal variation has got to do more with the poles alone. Coming to the third point, however, as we move towards the poles from the equator, the height increases during summer and it decreases during winter. That is because during the winter season, your air becomes this and therefore it is getting sinking. On the other hand, during summer, the air would be obviously heated even around the poles, there would be a light increase of temperature and that is why there would be an expansion of air. Air becomes a bit less dense during summer and therefore you have an expansion of atmosphere. By this way, you will have the seasonal differences of troposphere and by that the tropopause. Now coming to the seventh characteristic of troposphere, there is an altitudinal variation of temperature. What do you mean by that? Now what happens exactly at the tropopause? That is what we are going to see now. The zone separating the troposphere from the stratosphere is known as tropopause. No doubts about it. And then this tropopause, it actually acts like a lid for the troposphere. It actually does not let the troposphere to mix with the stratosphere. It is 1.5 kilometer thick. There is an isothermal layer. The tropopause is actually an isothermal layer as the temperature gradient is nearly constant. What do you mean by that? That is like you are in this tropopause layer, the temperature would be almost constant. There would be no variation because there would be no turbulence. Therefore, there will be no variation. Now, look at the same figure where you have the troposphere. We just now saw temperature drops with the increasing altitude. So, you have the graph going in this direction because the temperature keeps on decreasing as the altitude increases. But on the other hand, in the tropopause, please make sure that you understand this, that the tropopause is an isothermal layer. The temperature gradient, that is the change of the temperature with height, with altitude, remains almost same, almost constant and therefore it is uh, placed as a straight line in the graph. Now, the air temperature at the tropopause is about minus 80 degrees Celsius over the equator, whereas it is minus 50 degrees Celsius over the poles. Beware about this point. This is a very, very crucial point. The temperature is lowest above the equator in the tropopause and not at the poles. Please, please do pay close attention towards this point because people may think that it is the other way around, but actually it is not. Why does this temperature difference happen? The temperature is lowest at the tropopause above the equator than at the poles. Why is it so? Now, this entire diagram 
you cannot find it in any other books you do not find it in any other websites i have made it as the most simplest format so please do pay attention to it now since the temperature decreases upward at the rate of 6.5 degrees celsius per 1000 meter which is the nlr hence it is natural that at the height of 18 kilometers above the equator the temperature becomes much lower let us come back to the diagram here the equator let us assume that it is having a temperature of 32 degrees celsius now in the poles you have the temperature of 0 degrees celsius we are actually taking an average of temperatures in equator and poles now at the tropopause juncture that is here above an altitude of 18 kilometers over the equator now this entire region is nothing but the troposphere this limit is nothing but the tropopause so at the edge of the troposphere that is at the tropopause when you ascend 18 kilometers what happens when you ascend 18 kilometers you have a drop of 6.5 degree celsius for every kilometer so you have 18 into 6.5 which is minus 117 degree celsius there would be a drop of 117 degree celsius now if you have the temperature at the equator to be 32 say for example then at this point in the tropopause your temperature would be 32 negative minus 170 which would be minus 85 degree celsius very 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 simple math and then now come to the polar structure here you have a height of 8 km of troposphere and therefore at this point in the tropopause you have 8 into 6.5 degree celsius which is minus 52 degree celsius so if you have zero at the surface and then what will you have at the point in the tropopause it would be nothing but minus 52 degree celsius now this is the reason why you have a much lower temperature at the tropopause above the equator obviously minus 85 is much more lower than minus 50 now this is the reason why because of the nlr that is the reason why tropopause above the equator has a much lower temperature than the tropopause at the poles i'm sure you would have understood all these points please do analyze them in the concept of question and answer only because only then it will help you in the case of prelims and mains now thank you so much we'll catch you up very soon in the next session thank you